Hey, what's up? It's Ryan Watts here. You're watching Third and Longhorn. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a very special Pro Day edition of Third and Longhorn. Stick around after our interview with Ryan Watts for a special Pro Day recap. Today, we have a very special guest coming straight from the University of Texas Pro Day, Mr. Ryan Watts. Ryan, welcome. Thank you. Mr. Ryan, 5,000 Watts. <laughs> yes, I like it. So, Ryan, you, we always start the show off the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, how'd you get to Texas? I think you had a little bit of a different, longer route where you took a little stop up north. But yeah. talk about what brought you to Texas. Man, it was crazy because uh, originally I was committed to Oklahoma. Uh, so they started there, and then um, I ended up flipping my commitment going to Ohio State uh, late, in my, late in my decision. And I spent two years up there at Ohio State, but I just felt like for more opportunity and then to be back home at Texas, I saw Coach Sark get the job there. And then really Coach Joseph, he was a, he was a heavy recruitment for me at Notre Dame. So I seen him go to Texas, and I'm like, okay, yeah. So then when I entered the portal, I really knew where I wanted to go, go back home to Texas. What was um, the biggest difference, I guess, between being like in mm -hmm. you know, a Ryan Day, Ohio State, mm -hmm. Columbus, Ohio, yeah. <laughs> versus, you know, Coach Sark here in his program in, in good old Austin, Texas? Man, I mean, I feel like I, I was blessed, really. I had two great head coaches, uh, position coaches, like the culture program, both big at both places, really just being able to help with the turnaround because mm -hmm. Bijan had called me right when I got uh, in the portal. So I talked to Bijan and Jay Ford. And just preaching about the turnover and being a part of the turnover at Texas. And then you were a Texas kid being a part of that. Mm -hmm. So I was always thinking about that, too. And then, you know, I was a kid. I was always a, I was a band. I was more like, a, I was a Texas fan and mm -hmm. I was an Oregon fan, too. So, mm -hmm. Oregon, yeah. Oregon. <laughs> but you know why I got to be an Oregon fan? Because of the jerseys, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. 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 You, that's just, yeah. Like, like, no feeling, man. <laughs> exactly, bro. So just really being able to be a part of that and having that childhood dream be a part of Texas. And knowing that I can have an impact and changing the program, too. So having that that foreseen sight of what we could do. What was what was one of the, I guess if you were to like say, we did this at our house, we did this at Texas, what was one of the biggest differences? Uh, I'd say when we got here, we started that leadership program. Mm. Like, I don't think they ever, they never did that. I never heard of it. Mm -hmm. So they started a, like a leader, like player led leadership program. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. So, cause uh, everybody was always talking about culture issues. So yeah. I felt like it was a good group of guys, but having everybody follow the leader, pro the player led program, I think that was a big difference and uh, that helped shape the program. We see that too. Big uh, time. A lot of yeah, guys yeah. that come and sit in this very seat, they all say the culture, the culture, the culture, the culture. I'm, I'm assuming that's a, a, a big part of it. Yeah, and it started with that player led, that player led group, knowing what they what they wanted to see for the change, and just tired of all the talk, like always having like big time players coming in and, and not like putting on for Texas and just having bad seasons. Like they they wanted to do something about that and made some real change, and that's what that was a big uh, step step stone into that. Now rewind. Two years ago, whenever you first got to Texas, I actually met you your very first day. You was getting fitted for your cleats. Yeah. Back in the equipment room, I was trying to get Chip to give me some stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Still trying to get that, uh, that discount, that yeah. alum discount. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, Ryan, well, I say, God dang, how tall are you? Yeah. Dude was 6'2", coming in like, yeah. looking like a goddamn created player. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, bruh. How does Texas score somebody like that? Or how does Ohio State allow somebody like that to get away? But from your mindset, you already talked about what went into going to Texas to begin with. What were your thoughts once you got on campus? Like mm -hmm. your first experiences, first interactions. Yeah. And then from there, where, where did it take you? I feel like it was way easier than any other school because being from Texas, I, I did a lot of camps with a lot of people. Uh, on the team already, so I had like yeah. the safety, like Jaron and all them. I had met them a long time ago at camps, so I felt like it was really, it was real easy. And then going up, going up against them in like uh, high school games, yep. so especially Jay Ford too. So uh, I think I felt like it was easy, but I wanted to gain their respect. You can't just come in and like just mm -hmm. act all that. So I know they they probably saw all the dude from Ohio State coming in, but I just kept my head, my head down and like gain the respect. And I'm like a funny guy too, so like it was a it was easy to get. Uh, just like you get comfortable with them. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I feel like right, right, now we got to ask. I just other feel people. like other yeah. people got to say. Not like, funny. I don't feel like you can say. Like, I mean, shoot, they'll, they'll say that more like this. I'm goofy. Okay. So like, it was it was it was easy. Right. It was easy to uh to like to kindle in with those guys and like yeah. just uh showing my work too, and then coming to there showing my work. So gaining the respect so they could trust me. I feel like that was important. 
Yeah, you know, I want to add to that. That is true. He is he is that guy that 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 kind of marches to his own drum. Like it doesn't matter what the mood is during practice. You see Ryan out there talking noise. You see him just laughing. I mean, really having a good time. Uh, uh, being a DB, you gotta have confidence, right? Yeah. And I think that's that's part of that mm-hmm. that personality that you have. Um, um, being at practice, being able to go against you know, X man, being able to go against AD and all these guys, Jordan, uh, um, uh, how did that help you in practice? Being able to say, Hey, I'm about to go against people that are better in practice than I'm a play in the game. And, you know, did you, did you strap, you know, strap them up a little bit on in, oh, in yeah. practice? I mean, you know, I was there, so I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you the truth. So. Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like it was an iron sharpening iron, iron type thing, especially when I first got there, like they just saw a big dude, they didn't know exactly how it was going to come about business. So yeah. he def- they definitely learned like they can't be dancing around the line with me. They had to open up a release. So they definitely learned that fast. So they changed that fast. But uh, I feel like that was a big reason why I came too, because I knew X and uh, Jay Way. I watched him when I was in high school. So I, I already knew about him. I like that. They got they got some good receivers up there too. So and then come from Ohio State, we had good receivers. So I'm like, I want to go somewhere mm-hmm. where in practice is gonna be going out every day. It's not like a cupcake or anything. So we definitely had that at Texas, and then especially with the addition of Adani. So he was he was definitely different. Like he showed me some stuff. Who's hard, uh, who's harder respect. to cover when you're in practice? <laughs> who's harder to cover? The, 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 I mean, both of them pretty fast. But yeah, you know the the super fast guy uh, uh, or, or, or AD the big big. Big, Man, strong, fast. that's a hard one. I guess it's definitely different for each corner, okay. depending on your strengths. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I like how AD off of press, man. Like the way he, the way he can, um, he's like unorthodox in press. Like okay. the way he can bend his hips and how he gets squares, attacks your toes. It's different from anybody else I've seen. So I say he get, he get, he's trouble. I'm not gonna like. I'm a press corner. Like he, he went. He, he does a great job in press. So I think he keeps me on my toes. Made me get better every day for real. So. Okay. Well, I, I did read that you know you you got a little receiver in your background. Yeah. So and but obviously you know you about to hit the league right now as a DB. Mm. First of all, congratulations. Thank Absolutely. you. What made you decide I'm gonna play DB versus receiver? I mean, I look at your frame and yeah. I think that the same way you just described AD, it could be DBs out here describing you the same way. Yeah, man, I, it's easy. I could decide how I hit somebody instead of somebody just hitting me any way they wanted to. Like, nah, I wasn't doing that. Yeah. I mean, I play, yeah, I play receiver. I was, I was like really just third downs only, third and second downs. They put me out there. I'm just running. I had a catalog. Like, I was running oh, some nice right, right. 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 I watched some stuff. Yeah. So I felt Usually like. Usually DBs can't catch. You can catch, though. You oh, yeah, I can catch. Okay. I can right, catch. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was. Um, Really, I just didn't want to be hit any other way. I wanted yeah. to be the one hitting somebody. And just really, I, I felt like cornerback in uh, DB, like, I just been watching that since I was young. Like, that's why I felt more of a love for it since I was mm. young. Okay. And really just playing, I've been playing defense too. That was one of my first positions when I started playing. When I was like five, I played linebacker. So defense has been in my blood since I was young, for real. Gotcha. Well, we had uh, Michael Taff on here a couple of weeks ago, and, uh, and he was talking about the defensive back room and their receiver skills, and he claims that he is the best receiver in the in the room. Is that correct, <laughs> or are you a more accomplished better hey, I'm not. Right? I'm not going to lie. He, he got it, though. He, he really got it. I mean, I know y'all seen that clip when he picked uh, Quinn off in that uh, yeah, playoff yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. see now, like, he got yeah. my respect. Yeah. yeah. And he was one of the big ones that got my respect when I first got here. I was like, who is this dude on first day <laughs> right. of practice? Like, Tech, technically sound like he got a lot of my respect. So, shoot, I give it to him. I've been out. I've been out the window for a while. But <laughs> I put about if I put it, yeah. But if I put that work in for it, I could really dominate at that. I'm not lie. <laughs> speaking of speaking of dominant receivers, I did see what uh, Des Bryant said. Uh, quote: DB number six from Texas, a first round corner. End quote. Yeah. I mean, you from Dallas? Yeah. That's Des Bryant. Mm-hmm. What it mean to you to hear like an all time Dallas great say something like that? Yeah, I think that was real, man. Real recognized, real. I felt like just him being able to say that about me, I felt like that's a lot of respect to him for that. And um, I definitely, shoot, I had heard about that. My, my brother had told me about it like right after the game. I was like, what, for real? Yeah. X-Men? I said, what? <laughs> so I was like, shoot, I get it. That's, that's real for him. I, I appreciate him for that, too. It started out the season, man. I felt like, and then coming off, uh, I feel like I started out the season strong. Absolutely. And then um, just like, like unfortunate just things that happen and just playing throughout the season with injuries and mm-hmm. stuff. So uh, it kind of like kept, kept me down. Like I was definitely like on my own head about that because I wanted I was expecting big things this year and uh, just having just having that man. It, w- it was definitely hard this year for me. 
but uh, it's, it's it's real. I know what I'm capable of, so right. I have a lot of potential. I'm just trying to do what I can to get back there. I think that's been one of the things, though. Like, yeah, everybody been, yeah. and I've seen it myself. I'm like, oh, I'm well, nobody questioning the skill set. Yeah, the talent there, the potential there, but battling those injuries has yeah. been a part of. It's a part of the game, but mm. unfortunately, a part of the game you've been having to kind of overcome. Yeah. What do you look like at full health, ready to go, next level? Like, what can what can we expect? Sure, I feel like I got a little glimpse of that for the Bama game. I was all, I was turned up, mm -hmm. uh, healthy mm -hmm. early in the season. A lot of the games early in the season, for real, I felt like. But um, just definitely trying to improve my game. I feel like uh, one of the main things I've been working on this year, tracking the ball. I feel like a lot of times I did try and track the ball, but it's just like at the wrong moment, especially playing to the boundary, you know, hashes, hashes further, so the yeah. ball come out a lot quicker. So, and I feel like in a league, that there's no field and boundary. So right. uh, the right. ball, they're gonna have more time on the ball. So I feel like, and I've already been emphasizing it with my trainer. So I feel like my, my transition gonna be smooth for me. So I feel like when I get that, knock that down, I'm gonna be elite for real. Yeah. Talking about that transition, man, you completed combine, got to go through pro day just recently as well. Mm. I got to watch you in yeah. pro. They didn't drop a pass. So I can't say, <laughs> yeah. Kat, he, he tapped into his receiver skills yeah. 100%. But what has that process been like for you after the Sugar Bowl? Where'd you go train? Mm. How many times were you training? What did that process look like in mm -hmm. preparation for the combine? And then what'd you do after the combine mm. in preparation for pro day? And then what are you going to do? In preparation for the draft. Oh, yeah. What, what does that process look like for Ryan Watts? Well, it's, it's definitely real, man. Um, I declared on, uh, what was it? I think probably like three days after the Sugar Bowl, and mm -hmm. I was right at Dallas. Uh, my, girl was in, my girl was at the uh, the apartment, and we had it for a couple a couple weeks after. I'm like, nah, I got to get straight to work. Like, I ain't got... I ain't got time to waste. So I got straight to work six days a week. So you kicked your girl out? <laughs> no, she stayed at the apartment. I just oh, went ahead and got oh, home. Yeah. I went ahead and went home. And I got to go to work so you kicked yourself out. <laughs> yeah, I just went ahead and got to work and took my stuff. I was straight on the Kindle, man. I, uh, I had tunnel vision, really. Uh, six days a week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three days. So just getting on that, getting on track, being in the best shape of my, my life, really being completely healthy, trying to run as fast as possible, most mm -hmm. explosiveness. And uh, after the combine, I felt like I had run a four, I had run a four, five, three. I felt like I knew, I knew I was gonna run a four, four, but then I had run the four, five, three. I felt like my technique on that, I felt like when I got out, I was, uh, my, I think my get out, I was weaving a lot. So that, that mm -hmm. like, yeah, I learned yeah, a lot yeah. about how much that matters. So I was, I was definitely mad about that, but everything else overall for the combine, I felt like I did a great job going through my position drills smooth, mm -hmm. uh, smoothing out a lot of other DBs. I see, I'm like, I'm like, where are y'all training, man? I was like, <laughs> I was like, come on. But yeah, I seen that. And then um, my broad, I had 40 inch vert. Broad jump was 10 five, but I did uh, I did the vert like five times because they said I kept shuffling my feet. So I was really burnt out after that. Yeah. And the right, I went right to the broad jump. So I, mean, I you showed that though. You did what, 11 1? Yeah, 11 1 here. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's what. Cause I'm like, I get out the bed, I'm doing 10 10. So I'm like, come on, I got a 10 5. Like, <laughs> so I had, to, I had to redo to that. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I, I like that you just <laughs> casually dropped that you had a 40.5 inch vertical at the at that combine. And oh, it, yeah. Yeah, they made me jump five times too. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. yeah, just like, so dude, six the, 2 the one that they. The one time. that they actually counted <laughs> yeah, was the 40.5. Right. Like, <laughs> so he, might, he probably would have been, what, 41, Shoot, 42? Probably, man. I don't know. I probably should have did that, redid that one here, too. <laughs> did you start dunking in, like, sixth grade? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was, dumb, I was uh, dunking early. Slapping backboards in fifth grade and all. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was doing all that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like an intimidation yeah, factor yeah, for real. Yeah, I was doing that too. Oh, that eight foot there we go. You need to Fish mind. Price. <laughs> yeah, you need to mind your business. We didn't ask what the height was the goal. We just said <laughs> slapping the back. Saying, baskets right, were a different height back then. I'm hating. I'm hating. Right. Uh, <laughs> while you're at the combine, since we're on that, um, we get to talk to all the teams, right? Mm. Um, um, which is a. Uh, important part of the, the interviewing process and what they think about you. Well, what are teams saying when they, you know, cause you think of Ryan Watts, you think, man, he's so big. He might, he can go to safety for us. He can right. play nickel. He can, can, can or, or are you able to do it? Are you willing to be versatile like that? I know the answer is yes, but or, are you ready for that? Oh yeah, I'm ready for it. Okay. I feel like, shoot, uh, in high school, my sophomore year, I was playing all safety and I didn't want to move the corner. My Ooh. coach told me he had a, a higher ceiling for me at corner. So I was like, all right. And it took me a couple a couple months to like get into it. But I felt like that was my first love at safety. And I don't know what people be saying, like, do, do you want to play safety? I just, 
been playing corner all my life, and I feel like the size, but I could definitely play safety. I feel like, but I feel like not every corner can play safety. Absolutely, I feel sure, like sure. you got to be a smart, you got to be smart, willing to tackle, a good tackler. Yeah, that, and I, hey, that's I one like of my that. strengths. Are you yeah. like you got to be willing to tackle? Yeah, you got to be able to run the alley. And it's a different game, man. It's a different angles, right? All that. So I feel like that's that's one of my strengths in my game too. So I feel like transition for me would be easy and showing that versatility. Is that like something you're potentially interested in? Or? Oh, yeah, facts. Yeah. I'll easily play safety or corner, whatever the team needs me to play. Right. That's easy. And they were talking about uh, guarding, uh, a position they were talking about a lot, like guarding tight, tight ends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, man, I'll do that. I <laughs> guard receivers all, all day. Yeah. Fitting yeah. the alley runs, I'll do all that. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I mean, another thing, tell me too, nothing. like, like uh, how, talk to us about like that interviewing process, because a lot of things that people don't know is that, like, yeah, we get a chance on TV to see your physical attributes, mm. but we don't see that behind the scenes you've been academic, Big Ten, all academic, Big 12, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Was that mentioned at all when you were in those meetings with the teams? Uh, definitely. Uh, and I feel like, especially my coaches, they vouch for me, knowing that I'm a smart athlete. Every time we had them pop quizzes, always ace that. Mm-hmm. It was easy for me to always be in attention to detail because I feel like it's important. Mm. Uh, that's, one of, that's one of the things I strive for, like, uh, doing the little things right. right, I feel like that helps in the big in the big things. So, uh, just having that attention to detail, I take that in, in account of all aspects of my life: social, uh, football, and um, academics. Nice. What um, of your team meetings that you've had so far? Uh, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah. What's been uh, one of the more fun ones that you enjoy, mm-hmm. and then one of the tougher ones that mm-hmm. you probably didn't expect? Um, definitely. Fun one, I say the Steelers. I was in a formal with the Steelers. <laughs> and I, I really had the whole the whole room laughing. <laughs> I had the whole room laughing for some of the stuff I said. But I felt like it was all cool people. And so I felt like I was able to be myself. And they accepted me for who I was. Yeah. And I so definitely the Steelers. Uh, and then uh, I felt like the toughest one was Shrine Bowl. Mm-hmm. We had, that was my first, one of my first meetings. And it was uh, with the Bears. Uh, they had me uh, write. They had me write down. Uh, they told me their playbook. They their first install, and um, I had to remember it. And then write. And then they told me to write it down. And while I'm writing it down, they're hitting me with all these questions. It was like difficult <laughs> questions. It was like my. It was like my first or second interview too. So I wasn't really ready because like you start to get used to it. So that that definitely hit me. That was one of my tougher ones, yeah. but. I definitely respect them. And they were one of the first people to ask me about uh, like the run gaps too, because I've been playing corner all, all my uh-huh. life uh, yeah. or in college. So I wasn't really, I wasn't really, uh, I didn't really remember too much yeah. about where the safety would fit on some of these guys, especially like with pullers. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, it wasn't just the easy stuff. They gave me, that, they gave me the hard they had in the pullers, yeah, yeah, QB, yeah. all that. They, they, they yeah. talking about downhill power yeah, too. They, they hit me, yeah. who split zone, all that. I'm like, oh yeah, nah. This was, it wasn't no easy. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, okay, we'll get back. I gotta get back in the uh, yeah. oh, I gotta get back in the lab. Yeah, I gotta get back in the Welcome lab. To the yeah. Welcome so to the I NFL. Say, I say that definitely for sure. Is that what's the preparation like? So obviously you just talked about for sure filling in gaps from a run support standpoint, but like getting back into the lab mm-hmm. and studying the film work to be able to get an understanding of what it is. Is there somebody that you've leaned on during this process to be able to say, hey, I need your help on helping breaking down this film? Or yeah. has it all just been you, coaches? That's, that's easy. Uh, Jay Ford, for real. Yeah, really? You know, it's a little linebacker. He's going to know everything. Yeah, he's been uh, open for me. He was supposed to be training in uh, Frisco with us, but he was in Arizona. Oh, so time. I just ended up uh, getting on Zoom calls or calling him and yeah. uh, just getting with him about like what the D-line does right here on – it's really just all run for real for me too. Cause yeah. past I was at corner and I didn't have to do communication, but they knew I already knew what, what right. the whole defense has. So that was the easy part. But it was really just the run gaps and how everybody would fit. Well, lo- along those lines, of looking at the NFL and the league, like are, are there any players, past or present, who you look up to or kind of model your game after? Or you think are a good comp for you? You talking about like for my position? Yeah, or, or just anyone you look up to how they play. But yeah, mainly your position probably. Um. Well, away from my position, I say Tom Brady. He was a winner, so I was a Patriots fan, and that's why I developed uh, the love for winning too. So, just seeing him win so much, I think that's from a side. And in my position, I say Sauce Gardner because he's at my size and yeah. the way he plays man coverage. I feel like that's pivotal for real. He yeah. dominates the man coverage. And he's my side. I can't just look at some five ten corner guys. It's not my game for real. Like, I'm not. I'm not gonna move like him. And then. Um, I like Tariq Willen his his rookie year too when it came mm-hmm. to zone coverage. Mm-hmm. How he was a ball hawk too. So I say that. 
So if you're thinking about your game, if you was objectively kind of evaluating your game, what would you say is Ryan Watts' greatest strength and then the area of his game where you say he's going to continue to refine right there? Oh, uh, I say physicality. My physicality, yeah. And I feel like that translate. That's a big transla- translation for me, too, to be versatile because you can be physical at safety and uh, physical at corner. So I say definitely my physicality. And uh, just to work on really just tracking the ball, finishing for mm-hmm. us all. I got one more, and then then we're going to let you get out of here. Oh, yeah. So who are some guys that were on the team this year that didn't have breakout years yet, but you think mm. next year they're going to be the next up on the Don't team? Yeah, who should we be watching? Malik Muhammad, man. Yeah. 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 I thought like a lot of people know about him, too, though. He's on easy. Yeah. 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 But yeah, he's all right. Give me another. Star. Oh, I got you. I got you. Right. I got you right here. We I got you right you. here. We got this we asked, for Joe. We asked him who we don't know about. He named who y'all know. Oh, he named the starter. Yeah. <laughs> I got you right here. I got yeah. you right here. Bender. David Bender. David Bender. Yeah, I thought he was going to have a even a better season. Uh, like, the season that he's about to have, I thought he was going to have it last year. But this year, definitely, he's going to go crazy. Yeah. Okay. He's an athlete freak, and he's serious yeah. about his business, too. And I think he knows it's time for him to put it all together this year, too. Mm-hmm. So I think he's going to do big things this year, especially about, in the SEC. So. Mm. For sure. What about offensive side of the ball? Offense. Mm. One of those backups. DeAndre years. Moore. Mm. Yeah. yeah. He go good. I he like go, him. He's straight about his work. And I, I feel like not a lot of people give him recognition. Yeah. So I think and he's real mature. So I definitely yeah. feel this yeah. year. Awesome. I like it. Well, that's been awesome. Thanks for coming by, Ron. Yeah, we definitely yeah, want to have you back sometime when you come back in town after, oh, yeah. you know, during the season, et cetera, or, or when you have some time off. But we appreciate you, man. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. And good, so, good luck in that draft, up. man. Oh, yeah. Good appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to be watching. My, my Houston Texans, we need, <laughs> we need some safety. Oh, yeah. So I'm just, I'm throwing that out there. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Hook him, <laughs> sir. Hook him, hook him. Thanks, everybody, for sticking around after Ryan's interview. We wanted to grab the guys who were at Pro Day to get a quick recap. So I'm going to start with Fozzie Whitaker, who was the man on the ground there. Mm. (laughs) What are your thoughts? Like, what were your biggest takeaways from Pro Day? Yeah, I think the most exciting aspect of Pro Day yesterday was the fact that there were over 90 GMs, coaches, and scouts in attendance for Pro Day at Texas. That hadn't been the case in probably, I want to say, a decade. And we hadn't had that much hype in the bubble following this group of draft eligible players in a long time. So seeing what Sark has done in year one, year two, and then seeing the fruits of that being produced in year number three and seeing how much buzz that's created across the NFL country and just seeing how many people was there in attendance, including head coach Mike McDaniels, witnessing some of the great talents and putting it on display, man. I thought that was the number one takeaway that I had on my initial thoughts of what pro day was. It's like, man, it's a lot of people out here to see what these guys are doing. So, yeah, I, I was, I was getting nervous. I was out there. I'm like, man, I'm not doing nothing. I don't know. <laughs> it's just, uh, it was electric. It was a lot of people there and, and, and for good reason, right? We got, we got a talented team. We keep saying that, um, especially this past year, 2023 season, we got a lot of talent mm-hmm. on this Texas team and, 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 and they showed out, they showed out, they showed out. Yeah. I think what stuck out for me was just the talent at every position. Like when you go to a pro day, it's a Wednesday at noon. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna try to pop in and pop out. Mm-hmm. And while I was in there, I'm looking for an opportunity to get up out of there. So I'm like, okay, I'll wait for this position group. Oh, wait, we got to wait for him. Yeah, I'm going to wait for this position group. Oh, I got to wait for this dude. Oh, okay, I'm going to get out at O-line. Ah, Christian's going there. So it's like, <laughs> we had so much talent that I planned on being there for about an hour. I was there the full, like, three to four. So, oh, yeah. wow. mm-hmm. Who, in your opinion, made the most money yesterday? I think, who made the most money? I think X made a lot of money. His routes were outstanding. Like, I thought his, I thought his routes were crisp. He caught the ball well, and he looked like a four-two-one guy out there. I'll also say too, Quinn. Like I don't know. Whenever <laughs> he comes out next year, stole my question. Yeah, like. Sorry, sorry. About that. But I, you asked who looked the best. I had a front row seat right behind him. I don't know where he's going to be evaluated next year, but just know he's going to climb up the charts after his pro day performance. Mm. That's how good he looks in person. Mm. Uh, for me, you know, I'm going to take a, a little unorthodox approach. Right, I already know Murph. He, he crushed it. Don't get me wrong. But he I don't know if he made the most money because the money he going to make is already going to be higher. <laughs> same way with X, same way with AD, same way with Tavondre Sweat. But the guy that I thought really improved their stock and not necessarily saying he'll get drafted or or will get drafted high, but Jet Bush. 
Mm. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised with his athleticism, how he tested, how well he ran, uh, flipping his hips and the linebacker drills. He's played a ton of football. The crazy part about it, and I talked about this yesterday a little bit, was Jet Bush, no matter who was recruited over him, like you got five star guys, four star guys that come in and were supposed to play over Jet Bush. And somehow, some way, Jet Bush said, nah, I got a spot on this team. I got a role on this team. I'm still find ways to make myself useful and help our defense be solidified and be better. And I think that type of mentality as well as the versatility that he displayed yesterday, because not only did he do linebacker drills, mm. but he also did some fullback mm-hmm. drills. And if you know anything about fullbacks and that utility style role, it's a guy by the name of Nick Belour. He played for Detroit. He played for San Francisco. He was a guy that's a linebacker by trade, same way that Jet Bush is now, linebacker by trade. But every now and then they go on goal line. They need a lead blocker. Hey, Go fit up in there and go take on that middle linebacker. <laughs> yeah. It's what you do anyways, yeah. mm-hmm. but now just go do it against a defender that's trying to do the same thing that you've been already accustomed to doing. So I thought him showcasing his versatility, flexibility, catching the ball out of the backfield. He was bigger in person, too. Routes. I was surprised He's a little bit big bigger. Was, yeah. He jumped higher than I thought. Mm-hmm. Like, he ran a little fast. It, it, was, it was impressive. So I thought he made himself some money. Like I said, don't know where he's going to go. He probably still will be an undrafted guy. But he, he might have jumped up into maybe a priority free agent list rather than somebody that doesn't get a call until way later whenever training camp rolls around. So true. That, that was exactly what I was going to say. Um, I'll expand on that a little bit. It's the more you can do at the end of the day, right? Yeah, you talk about fullback. You talk about playing linebacker. Jet Bush is a guy that can play uh, behind the line, um, um, on the line, uh-huh. outside backer, be able to rush. Super smart guy. He was stoked when I came up um, and spoke to him right before uh, um, uh, the testing. I mean, he was mm-hmm. like, "Man, I, you know, I've been doing this, and I'm, my body feels good." And and that's that's pretty cool to see all um, the the GMs and the, and the head coaches and all these scouts in there. And Jet is like ready to go. Just mm-hmm. just. Uh, you know, bright eye, bushy tail, um, um, being able to, um, um, I guess, perform well in front of them. He's going to be a guy that I'm telling you right now, he, he's going to surprise a lot of people because he's he's been defeating the odds his whole life. Right. Like, like right. that's just what he's been doing. Mm-hmm. So he's accustomed to that. He has a chip on his shoulder all the time. So yep. he's a guy he and he may be just like you said, that rookie free agent telling just because he, he doesn't have as much film as you want. But he'll get on a team and people are going to say, we, we got, we got, we, 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 we need this guy. Like, in there. He keeps running by. He's a running good by guy, this, man. Yeah. So he's, he's going to lay the, um, raise the level of play, whoever he, he's around. So he's a good guy to have on your team. Jalen Ford. I mean, when you talk about, mm. I, I, I don't really measure up the, um, um, the 40 and the 5, 10, 5 right, and right. the cone. I don't mm. like that stuff is cool. It's cute. But when you talk about the linebacker drills, talk about yep. movement yep. being being fluid. He was so fluid, and 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 I loved it. I, I didn't do this when I came out because I, I wasn't I wasn't chiseled up. He had a shirt off the shirt whole off. time, showing <laughs> showing what he made of. That's smart though. That's yeah. smart because it's like they remember that, right? Regardless of if it means something or not, I remember Jalen Ford. He looks amazing, right? He looks mm-hmm. like. Uh, uh, a NFL linebacker, I mean, 6'2", um, 240. I mean, he runs well, hips and swivel and all that stuff, get in and out of breaks, caught every ball. They, mm-hmm. don't, you know, he doesn't drop anything. So when you talk about just being able to show out in front of that group, and a lot of people, a lot of scouts were talking to him. I mean, this guy looks yeah. looks amazing. And obviously the, the receivers, um, it's one thing to run a 4'2 run a uh, and a 4'3 um, within A.D. Mitchell, but when you run routes, good, mm-hmm. they like that. That yeah. adds up. It's, yeah, it's no a question. big difference mm-hmm. when you say, man, this guy's a 4 3 guy, and you get, see the routes, you're like, okay, I've right. I, I kind of seen that before. Mm-hmm. But when you run good routes, and Bessie AD had a big, long, you know, Ooh. long pass, he Finger, went to go get this. Oh, yeah. that's oh, great, man. Tip. I'm glad he, uh, he tried to throw it out there. And like you said, Quinn, Quinn did his thing. I mean, he was, this is what he do. He's really got a really talented arm. So I knew he was going to be zipping the ball. Yeah. What's good about the receivers is like, obviously you can run a fast 40, but then you cut on the tape and it's like, I don't know if he really looked like that fast on the field as he yeah. ran 40 wise. Yeah. When we watched them receivers yesterday, 
they look like <laughs> every, every times. bit of the park. <laughs> they look like they're forty every times. So it's up for GMs, for for scouts to see that match up with what they saw in person. They passed the eyeball mm-hmm. test for real. Mm-hmm. Well, I think they're. I mean, you guys covered it mostly with a lot of the a lot of the people that. Uh, Texas fans are confident they're going to have a, a, a draft position. And I think not that these guys aren't, but I think they're the ones that people tend to ask the questions about. So I wanted to, to get y'all's feeling on uh, Ryan Watts day yesterday and a couple mm-hmm. others. I'm going to start with Ryan. So who wants to jump in? I'll now? take it, man. I, I, we already talked with Ryan earlier in the interview, but yeah. Ryan was extremely smooth. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know if, the knock that he heard on him throughout his time at Texas was like, oh, you're a bigger guy. Oh, you can't really run. Oh, you know, it seems like your hips are tight. Like, I don't know if he heard that and was like, okay, I'm about to apply this pressure. Mm. Because the way he performed at the pro day, he, he looked flawless. And it was one of the few people that Mike McDaniel actually talked to in person afterwards. Mm. And whenever you have a head coach come up to you and talk to you in that type of setting yeah. where over 90 other people are there, that head coach could be doing something else. Yeah. Or that head coach could have left. They after don't do that for no reason. After, yeah. right, after he saw who he wanted to see. And maybe he was there to see Ryan Watts. But at the end of the day, seeing how Mike McDaniels gave him high praise, seeing how they interacted, seeing how Ryan Watts lined up at corner, did corner drills, lined up at safety, did safety drills, didn't drop one single ball. Mm. I thought he was impressive. Jumped out of the gym. We talked about it. He, <laughs> he jumped 10-5 at combine. He said, I do 10-10 out of my sleep. <laughs> and he was like, bet, I'm going to go show you something. Mm. Boom, 11-1. Right? So he shows his explosiveness, jumped over 40-inch vertical at the combine, ran a 4-5-3. Mm. I think that's another stigma, right? Mm-hmm. Can he run? I think that's really good. I think he, he wanted, he wanted, he, he was, you know, he he was Gotta hoping get to have a four or four. I'd say low four or five for his size. Right. Yeah. That still was yeah, no, no, no. that's so that, impressive. Yeah, putting that all together, man, and then putting the workout that he had together, fluid. He was smooth. He didn't look like a six two guy from my perspective. I'm no analyst or evaluator on the NFL scout level, but I am an analyst in the media realm. And from what I saw, I do see his game translating to a draft pick number one but also making an impact on the team whenever he gets that opportunity. And, and kind of going off that point, I can vary. There's some guys that, for some reason, have more success at the next level. Yeah. And I don't know why yeah. that is. So true. I could very easily see Ryan Watts being one of those yeah. guys. He got, the phys- he got the physicality. He got the physical tools. Tall, lean. The skill set. Right? Versatility. Like, yeah. he can play safety. can play corner. Like, I can very easily see an uh, NFL GM look at him and fall in love with him and be like, oh, we know exactly we what to do with him. this type of play. We got to go yeah. get yeah. him. Yeah. That was, <laughs> so the big thing about Ryan is he, like you just said, he's got that physicality about him. He's tall. He's rangy. He can move. He can catch. He can do all those things. He can run. Um, he's not going to be um, low on opportunities at the end of the day. Somebody, I mean, regardless of what they think about him, somebody's going to say, hey, I can coach you. Yeah, I got it. I, 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 I can do something. Yeah. Let, I can yeah, put you somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> let, and, and he's going to have that opportunity. So that's what he has for him. Some people go into the draft where they say, man, my measurables are not right. It's just, man, I want wish somebody give me a chance. And mm-hmm. I have this chip on my shoulder. Not saying you don't need it. He's a, he doesn't need a chip, but he's got the size. He's got the eyeball test. When he walks in the room and say, hey, guys, we I mean, yeah. for a corner or, 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 or safety or whatnot, he's. I, I want to use him and, and and see what I can do with him. Right. So. Yeah. All right. Well, this this is one that I think is on a lot of Texas fans' minds. Jordan Whittington. Mm. Jay Witt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, Jay, Jay Whitton, Um. He he's he's nursing some injuries right, right now. So yeah. um um. Uh, but. Man, they was gonna make it regardless. Yeah. I'm talking about yeah. in, in <laughs> football or not, uh, 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 and not to make football light right now because I know that's his dream. Um, but when he gets well enough, he's he, he he'll be out there. And he caught a few balls uh, yesterday, but mm-hmm. he just he didn't he didn't explode out or anything just because they knew he was nursing something. Mm-hmm. So he's he's being smart about it. But I know teams for the next few weeks. I know teams are gonna invite him down to have some more interviews mm-hmm. and have him work out because he hadn't worked out yet. Yeah, I, I got a chance to talk with him as well yesterday and he mentioned that he's doing his own personal pro day three weeks from now. Oh, nice. Once he's recovered up from oh, the awesome. injury. So that gives him I the like opportunity <laughs> to really showcase where he's at in a moment where it's kind of been symbolic of his career, right? Every single time Jay Witt started getting the ball rolling, mm-hmm. something comes up. And I hate whether that it was yep. shoulder, whether it was hamstring, whether it's hernia, 
Whatever the case may be, Jay Witt has been battling through injuries and having to fight adversity his entire career at the University of Texas. And this progress and process that he's going along right now through draft day and after draft day, however that looks for him, um, is another stepping stone and a testament to the things that he's been able to overcome. Because Jay Witt's skill set, to, to AO's point, people that go into the NFL and probably have a better career or possibly have an opportunity to have a better career, I think Jay Witt can fall into that category. Yeah. Now, obviously, you got to get healthy because if you're not healthy, yeah. the best availability mm -hmm. is being available, right? You got to be available. The best ability, sorry, is availability. And if he's not available, then that just cuts his chances. But the moment he's able to really be healthy, showcase what he can do, then ultimately Jay Witt, in my opinion, has an opportunity to take off at the next level because of the way teams will utilize his skills and expertise. You turn on the tape, one-on-one -on -one opportunities after he catch the ball, nobody brought him down. It yeah. took at least two people to bring him down. He broke the first tackle almost every single time. <laughs> Average 15 yards a pop. Mm -hmm. Only had one touchdown. I know everybody think touchdowns is everything, but at the end of the day, there's only one football. Mm. Jay Witt made the most of his opportunities and the way that he played, he played each play as if it was his last. And if he takes that same type of mentality in the training that he's taken and then also add that up with taking care of his body, I can truly see Jay Witt. I don't know if he goes undrafted or maybe late round draft pick, day three draft pick. I can see him still sticking with a team, making a team, being a role player from a special teams perspective, but then working his way into the slot or maybe the outside receiver in the Z position and then finding those third downs. Right. That was what he was utilized a lot at Texas. Reliable hands using what he got, using his tools and then going to go break a tackle. A lot of DBs at the next level, they get paid to cover. And a lot of them will say that yeah. mm -hmm. they get paid to cover. Stops right there. They see they, <laughs> they see Jay Wick looking like a running back yeah. and they like, hey, bro. If I hit you, I, I, I did what I could, right? That's what some of them was going to like. the edge. Right. <laughs> right. I did what I could. Safety's yeah. supposed to help me. Linebacker's yeah. supposed to help me, whatever the case may be. And the Jay Wick can really make some big opportunities uh, if he's afforded them. So I think ultimately Jay Wick, man, he just needs to get healthy, showcase what he can do whenever he does his personal pro day. Uh, and then obviously, man, take it like he's been taking everything else with a chip on his shoulder, put his head down, grind, and then make the most of every opportunity. And I think he can stick around on a team as well. Well, and that's great. Let's go to, this is my, uh, this is my big question. And the one I'm most excited about, I want to hear about Keelan Robinson. Yeah, I was just about to say that, man. Yeah, I, I was boy. just about to stop. Yeah, I've heard, like, some, I've heard it's some Somebody, yeah. 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 Um, so Keelan, Keelan's another guy that's going to translate well into yep. the NFL. Mm -hmm. He's going to be a, a matchup problem for guys like myself. Yep. Just just for linebackers, like when you put him in the backfield, it's it's you. you he's faster than you. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's more athletic than linebackers. I mean, he can and he can run between the tackles. He can get outside. He can do it. He can split out. Right mm -hmm. now, it's really uh, he just the more you can do and just the versatility. Mm -hmm. What he showed when. X was catching the ball when AD was catching the ball, running routes. He's right out there and doing him. He looks really good. I mean, he was fast. I mean, it's one thing. Right. You think about that X and, and AD super fast, right? Right. Keelan right there. I mean, easily. It wasn't like a drop off at all. So I, I can't wait to see where he lands and what coach would say, man, I can, I can use that. Yeah. I'm just telling you, man, that was yeah. impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. And I, I agree with that analysis. Um, kind of going back to my earlier point where somebody runs fast, so you got to see if it matches up on film. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the opposite for Keelan. Now, right. I know during the combine, <laughs> I know he didn't run as fast as at yeah, the combine, four, and four, I felt two. for him. I felt for him. Four, I was four, like, two. we know Keelan. Which is a really, four, three that, guy, right? That's, yeah. what, that's what's crazy. That's, that's the crazy but that part. Shows, He's saying low 4-4. Like, like, oh, like, oh, that's no, how fast that's Keelan is. Right, right. Low 4-4, that's a disappointment. That's how fast Keelan is. But he's one of those dudes where, like, you see his number, okay, 4-4, you think he's fast. Then you cut on the tape, and you're like, hold on. He looked a little that, faster that, than that, a 4-4-2, right? Yeah. And that's what it looked like in the bubble yesterday. Yeah. Like you saw his yeah. on-field speed, and you feel like, oh, I can definitely use him. I, I know their body types aren't the same, but the way that you can use him, I see very similar to a Darren Sproles. Mm -hmm. Like just a mm -hmm. versatile guy out the backfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Keelan yeah. Keen will make a lot of money because of what he's done at the University of Texas on a special team standpoint, right? His prowess and his appearance at punt return, whenever he's going to go get a punt, 
Like he is special from that aspect. His ball get off. All of those would give them that opportunity as well as kickoff return. Right. Obviously, whenever he has two healthy hands and not having to wear a club, <laughs> yeah. right? It's a different Keelan, right? <laughs> right. Let's bring it back. Yeah, let's tape. bring it, man. <laughs> man, that right. Help her hurt his let's bring that back. But that, but that goes to show you the toughness and the tenacity that a guy like that mm-hmm. possesses. And speaking along the lines of toughness. Cat did 20 reps yeah. of 225 Man, bench I press. I did 21. Yeah. So, right. yeah. and, <laughs> so me, and Fozzie, me and Fozzie go back and forth about this all the time. <laughs> athleticism is different than strength. Absolutely. And True. I think edge players are the most athletic guys on the field. That's I'll give it to you. That's pound for pound, That's running backs are the strongest guys on the field. And I think Keelan showed that yesterday. Athletic. Uh, I, can, I, I got you. I know. We're not finna. We not, just because Jay not here, you're not finna try me. You're not finna try me. You're not finna try me. <laughs> you ain't finna try me because you think you got a chance. I'm gonna still keep it real. Athletes, running back is what an athlete is. Hey, you look up the word athlete, it's like <laughs> ten running true. backs. That and then everybody I know that person. But uh, but but Keelan, man, he got the skill set. Again, just from my projection, possibly a day three guy, possibly a pre- priority free agent, but could be a very big steal for whatever team for sure. takes him because of. What he can bring to the table. Nobody can coach his speed. Everybody doesn't have his speed. Right. And then he's a special team core guy. Yeah. All four of them, he's out there, mm-hmm. right? Punt, punt return, kickoff, kickoff return, especially at gunner. Like, yeah. Like you can't have too many gunners. Like you, you, you can yep. never have enough yep. of them in the NFL. And it's only so many roster spots that you can give away. And if he can make the roster, even phenomenal. But the reason why he'll make a roster is because of what he's able to do from a special teams perspective and how tough he is, no matter the circumstances or the odds that's been put in his favor, you too short or you're not strong enough, whatever the case may be, he always defies them. So I, I, I loved his performance. Uh, I would have loved if the coaches would have allowed him to showcase a little bit more of his uh, jump cutting ability. They did mm-hmm. some of that, but where Keelan really excels is off the one cut and go. Yep. And you got to see a little bit from, from what they – wanted him to do. He did a lot of the receiver stuff early on. It was X, it was AD, it was Jatavian Sanders as well. And then you had uh, Keelan in there mixing in the receiver stuff. And then they they broke off and did a couple running back things after. But if they can see him hit that one cut ability, it's on tape. So I know they see it, but that's where he really excels and where he can kind of separate himself from other kind of late round draft pick guys or other priority free agent guys. Murphy's a guy that we we haven't really... uh, uh, it's just we know. We, see, I, yeah. Okay, we oh. we we know oh. everything about him. We, we we can rave about him all day, right? Um, we, but he's he's st- he's still impressive, man. I mean, just from just just the conditioning, just him going through the drills. I mean, he looks like a linebacker. Just, I'm just moving wise. He got great oh, yeah. feet. He may be a little undersized when you talk about height, but nobody's going to care because when you turn on the film, this guy, I Boom. mean, he can oh. Man, take on a double team, shed off things. Uh, um, I mean, he's like rag dog and you know lineman, which are you know plus three hundred plus pound <laughs> right, guys. Right. But Byron Murphy, man, he's a killer. That's a that's the kind of guys. Him and Sweat. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm talking more about Byron just because it, he's he's just when it comes to conditioning wise, when they're doing all these drills, these big guys get tired. Mm-hmm. He I didn't wanna, get kind of he, he didn't get tired. Up. He never quit. <laughs> he didn't get tired. I'm like he never golly. Quit. But being an inside linebacker, I need guys like, man, you telling me I got Byron Murphy and uh, uh, T-Sweat in front of me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm you good. Your chops. I, your wish, chops. I wish Lyman would pull up on me. Like, you you got to take care of those guys right. first, and then everything opens up. But yeah. I, I'm excited for, for Murphy. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it, we're probably not getting into who who would have the uh, – it's too early to who would have the best, you know, NFL career out of these two mm-hmm. – Awesome guys, explosive guys, but Byron Murphy is is a freaking killer. Yeah, and I just kind of wanted to touch on that too. Um, the best thing I think you talked about was his conditioning. Yeah, because at, at pro days for D linemen specifically, Ooh, it's, a it's a gauntlet. It's a gauntlet. Like it's Ooh. almost to the point where the NFL guys are trying to see if you're gonna survive. How you holding up? How you holding up? Yeah. Hold yeah. up? Yeah. That's what it is. Up? So to see a guy like Murph going through that gauntlet. Like rep after rep, he did not slow down. If anything, he got better yeah. as the, as the like drills. You, you just don't off, see that. Really, like really I'm, I'm going back to my pro day, and you know, after four or five drills, you're like, 
I'm in survival. I just can't tap. I, I just can't, I can't tap. tap if, I, right. if I don't tap, I'm good. That's a win. Nah, Murph was attacking these drills, drill yeah. after drill and getting yeah. better. And I think that was the most impressive part. Um, not to sleep on sweat. For somebody his size, just oh. him getting through the workout, yeah. I think opened up a lot Hold of NFL down. players' eyes. I, uh, down. NFL scouts' eyes. I know they see that, that 360 and they get a little nervous because guys are smaller typically in the NFL. But the way he finished and the way he attacked as well, I think that... Uh, I think that impressed a lot of NFL guys. Mm-hmm. And, if, and if you're talking about best overall performance from my perspective, in my opinion, Murphy had the full package, total yeah. package. He, mm-hmm. he looked like a top 15 pick in the draft. I think he will be a top 15 pick in the draft. I don't think he makes it past 15. Yeah, right. I want you. Yeah, like he, you. he is he is one impressive dude. We've, we've said it years, right? His freshman year. I actually was pulling on pull up a tape on Longhorn Network. Don't believe me, <laughs> but I was calling for. I was like, man, this dude's supposed to be playing more. Mm-hmm. He needs to be in there. And the funny part about it was his recruitment process. He was overshadowed mm-hmm. because the one that was next to him was the five star guy mm-hmm. from Desoto. They was like, oh, we need him. And Murph kind of got overshadowed. Went under the radar. Three star guy originally, and like seeing the way he's had that chip on his shoulder since he was at Desoto, coming to Texas. Playing behind some really good players, Ojimo, Snacks, yeah. playing behind Sweat, right? Having to wait his turn, but also chomping at the bit, right? He put all that together throughout his Texas career. And man, he's starting to reap the benefits of it. I, I, I gave a comp yesterday of what he was able to look like and how he impacts the game, similar to a guy by the name of Grady Jarrett. Mm-hmm. So Grady Jarrett, yeah. defensive lineman for the Atlanta Falcons. Unfortunately, I had to play against him twice because he was in the same division. The dude was absolute terror and disruptor, not just on first down, not just on second down, not just on third down, but even on fourth down if you need to get him in there as well. Every down, he was a guy that you could rely or depend on. And I think Byron Murphy has that same type of skill set and availability and versatility to play no matter what down it is, to be able to make an impact on the play. So I thought he had the best performance, hands down, out of all the Texas players yesterday. Well, before we wrap here, I want to hear what you guys' pro day at Texas memories were. Oak, I'll start with you, man. Mm. I was kind of in Jay Witt's situation where I was, I I had a couple injuries. Like, Mm -hmm. I've always had a little injury bug. Um, So I was hampering an injury, and that's the worst situation to oh, be in because it's like you want to go out here and compete I got all these scouts but at the same time I don't want to set myself back so it's a weird yep. dynamic I ended up working out um, I killed the field drills um, but I didn't test as well as I wanted to and it was because I was hampering that injury so yep. if I could do anything a little differently I wouldn't have tested and would have just did the field work mm-hmm. so that was that was my experience how about you Foss? For me, it was uh, completely different I, I, I got to speak with <laughs> another participant uh, Jonathan Brooks, um, JB, man, we, we all know what a special season he was able to have over 1,400 yards from scrimmage, 11 total touchdowns, uh, rushing and receiving, and rated as the number one running back by almost every draft analyst that you look at. Come on, Cowboys. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but wasn't able to do the combine, wasn't able to do pro day, and that was kind of my situation. I went to the combine, could only do bench. So I did bench, got checked out, poked prodded on, on my knee to make sure how my recovery was going on. I had surgery um, in January. Uh, I tore it in November, had surgery in January because I had to let my MCL heal up. February was the combine, had to go back for the recheck in April. And then the draft happened in May while it was still happening in May. And so um Obviously, Pro Day was another opportunity for scouts to talk to me to see how my progression was going. So they saw me in February. They saw me in March when our Pro Day was. Then they saw me again in April for the recheck. And so just being able to do bench was the only kind of taste of the true combine and Pro Day experience that I was able to partake in. I got to obviously do interviews, uh, which was cool in and of itself. But, man, it's something that I I wish I could have been able to take a part of because I felt like I would have been able to run fast and Felt like I would have been able to catch the ball well and showcase my versatility a little bit more. But ultimately, I was put in that position by God to to be where I'm at right now. So uh, it was a cool learning experience. But I, I was able to have a conversation with Jonathan Brooks and, and 
feel kind of how he was going, kind of chomping yeah. at the bit, ready to get back on the field. Oh, but that and helped him too. As well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We had a we had a nice little long conversation. What, so what was, was your cool. forty time when you when you played? I never got to run. I mean, just in, so I know, I know, I I know not giving no gas. Or <laughs> I think just a little <laughs> truly, <never> truly, true. <laughs> truly. If I would have ran a forty, I felt like. My best forty would have been like a high four three, like four three seven okay. four three eight. I, I was about to say four yeah, three eight. eight. I would have been I, as much as I want to hate. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That oh, probably would have been my I best I was waiting time. for him to go low four threes, and I would have jumped in. But it was, hey, it was, like 4 one 9 yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have jumped in then, but I can't even I would have, his, I would have numbers. Yeah. Honestly, you know? I would have felt yeah. like I would have yeah. been in Keelan's situation. 4-4-2, oh, wow. four, four, but possibly felt like I could have ran a 4-3, yeah. uh, a high 4-3. So that's that's where I think I would have ran if I ran one. Got but, it. DJ, but, how about you, man? What do you remember? Man, that is – sorry, I'm probably – hopefully I don't get off too much. But what, what year was that when you um, played for the Browns? That was 2013. And what year was that for you? That was league? that was my second year. That was your second year. So yeah. so part of that is we don't they didn't have much um film on Fozzie. Yeah. So I, I knew Fozzie. I'm like, <laughs> I, I know this guy's pretty good, right? <laughs> I mean, they just gave you a number. I don't know what number. Yeah, I was 35. 30. Yeah. I was out there. yeah, he was out there. And that we, was before uh, 43. <laughs> That was before the 40. That was, man, they get, okay. they just said, here. Bro. Yeah, yeah. We, we've this all been here. This one's it available. Was, it was, it was yeah. right after Trent Richardson actually got traded away. And it was mm-hmm. like, you can pick three or 35. I was like, well, I ain't finna pick his number. <laughs> I finna, or he was 33. I'm sorry at that yeah. time because it wasn't single digit number. He was 33. And they said, you could be 33 or 35. I was like, well, I'm not finna follow him. Mm-hmm. Just give me whatever other available number was there. So, so 35 was, was it. Yeah, he wasn't on the scout report like that. So we line up. We may be in the red zone a little bit. And I'm looking. I'm like, that's Fozzie right there, and and usually, you know, I'm the, I'm the whole player, and the, and the mic backer, he the way the formation was, he had him, and I'm like, I'm like, oh snap, that's hey hey, get out, get out, out. <laughs> get out. <laughs> Hut, touchdown. I'm like, oh. I'm like I, I kind of felt bad for him. I'm like, I know who that was, bro. I should have yeah. switched with you. But anyway. That's, not to interrupt, but that's funny about playing in the league and playing with guys you used to play right, with. You because know. it's like, you know what? We yeah. know what we can do, like, hey, bro, but hey, everybody hey, else don't know. Hey, so watch him, like, bro. Y'all better circle this right. Dude, right? Watch him, bro. Yeah. But um, my, my, my pro day um, went well, man. Um, um, I, I stayed healthy. Um, nice. um and I went to the combine, uh, ran low four or five. Um, my, I actually looked this up like a week ago because it's been a while. It's been a long time since I've <laughs> been to the uh, combine, but it was a low four or five. But the, what jumped out to me was the shuttle drill. My shuttle drill was three, uh, three, uh, 3.87. So, three eight seven. so I, for me to stop Bro, you and start. You ran a 3.87 at the combine? Up. Yeah, at the, the combine. Hell. 3.87. Oh, my God. Three, I mean, so it was the, it was the second I had second best out of everybody, it, it, like like DB, DB yeah, running back. That's yeah. like three eight seven. So bro, that might be a linebacker like record, bro. It, 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 was, it gotta be three eight seven. Yeah, 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 I looked it up. Yeah. I, got it. I was like, I was like, dang, let me scream. <laughs> that real? Yeah. Right. But um, that's the right <laughs> Derek Johnson. <laughs> but the good thing when the pro day came, I didn't have to worry about anything. But um, bench, I actually didn't do bench at combine. I did bench uh, twenty one times. Never was that. strong. But the bench part, it's like, hey, you you get twenty and up yeah. for linebackers. You good. You also never gonna be in that position, right? 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 right. <laughs> so, um, and, and I and I did linebacker drills. I've been athletic, so that that was easy for me. It was mm-hmm. more DB looking kind of drills that I was doing, but um, uh, it, it wasn't packed the way it was this year. I mean, it wasn't that mm-hmm. packed. I don't remember. I mean, we only had like me at that time. Me and Cedric Benson was coming out, but that was what. The, Biggest hope, high profile guys yeah. at that time. Yeah. We had a couple more other guys, but me and Cedric was the main guys, uh, and he went fifth, what, fourth in the draft or whatnot. But it was good. It went well. Family came up and watched it, so it was a good opportunity. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, guys. Appreciate the time. And I'm going to say something that hasn't been said at Texas in a while. I'm really excited to watch the draft. I think we're going yeah, yeah. to oh, yeah. have a big yeah. day. Absolutely. So we'll uh, we'll recap after that. But uh, hook how, Well, real oh. quick, how many guys go in the first round? Oh, in y'all's opinion? Three. You got three? I got three Who as well. Who are the three? Murph, yeah. AD, and X. That was, yeah. Those are my three That's as well. what I got, too. Yeah. I got you. That is true. Yep. Yep. Although, yeah. I will say, <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. Yep, that's right. Although I okay. will say okay. the Chiefs picking up Hollywood Brown make me wonder if if, if they're if, gonna skip if, on X. Yeah. But I think X goes X before, go before that. Yeah, I you think it goes before that. It'll go from it yeah, go to okay. ten to twenty mm-hmm. two and tw- twenty five. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. Yeah. Yep. All right, yeah. we'll see. All right. All right, Hook thanks everybody. Hook them.